Hey, what's up, everyone? My name's Zach Olinger. In this podcast series, I talk about relationships. Now, I know, as a man, you may not want to talk about relationships. Or you may even tell me that the relationship that you're in is already pretty good. But I'm going to invite you to consider this. Could you be a little bit more fulfilled in the relationship that you have? I would like to have you consider that there may be other ways to kind of see the conflicts that are truly just unnecessary that we all experience in a different light. And if you're open to receiving or just giving me a little bit of your time, then I look forward to my guests and I inspiring you to become a man that can have more freedom, less conflict, and more pleasure in their relationships. Thanks for joining me. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me on The Real Zach Olinger. Today, I've got a, a great guest. Her name is Lynn Larson, and she's going to be talking about her experiences that she has. She's going to get into her story of, about, you know, her just her background and her personal experience and how that has flavored her relationships and just where she's come from, where she's been and like where she's at now and everything probably in between in some regards. So thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us, Lynn. Appreciate it. Yeah. Are you ready to get sticky? Because I am totally real and transparent. I'm going to share from the heart. Let's do it. (laughs) Um, First, I'm Lynn Louise. I'm the Cosmic Valkyrie. And what I do is I help women completely heal from past trauma so that they can step very deeply into their higher purpose and develop a successful relationship with themselves and their business so they can manifest extreme health and wealth. Because we all know that's what we need and want in this lifetime. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and dive into my story because it's directly related to why I do the work that I do. Perfect. So like most of your listeners, I'm assuming I popped out onto this earth and I was like, I'm here. I'm going to make great changes. I'm going to like change the world, help people. I'm going to show up and be amazing. And I just had this idea that I was put on this earth to change people's lives. I knew it from a very early age. And when I was 15, I was sexually assaulted by a close friend and an upperclassman. And it was that night that my self-trust took off, just disappeared. Even though my logical brain said, you're strong, you can deal with this. It's not your fault. Everyone will tell you it's not your fault. My subconscious was like, fuck off. You got in the car to begin with. You can't trust yourself. So that was playing in the background. And so what I did is I handed over the decision-making to my parents, to well-meaning caretakers, to professors, counselors, everyone that thought they would know what's best for me. And so how did that play out? I went to university. I worked my way up the corporate America ladder. I landed myself in a great corner office in San Francisco. I was making great money, had an apartment most people couldn't afford. I had a nice boyfriend. I was able to go out with friends, have season tickets to the San Francisco opera. Everything looked awesome. But what was happening behind the scenes? I was drinking every night to try and combat my anxieties. I was emotionally eating every day at lunch. I was running. I was a running to distract from my emotions instead of what I do now running for my own pleasure. I was shopping for gratification, thinking that I could find happiness there. All the while living paycheck to paycheck, struggling beyond belief. And one afternoon I was standing in my corner office and I had this beautiful view of the Golden Gate Bridge and I just would always watch the fog move in and it was very romantic to me. But that day I was watching it roll in and all of a sudden I felt like my world was collapsing around me. And I was like, what the fuck? I was depressed, I was alone, I felt like an imposter. I didn't know how the fuck I made it where I did because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I just was like, I. I can't carry this anymore. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, you climbed the wrong mountain. You climbed the mountain that everyone told you you should climb. You're helping corporations grow, not people. You're not aligned with this. This isn't who you are. This isn't where you came from. And so it was that day that I took and put myself as a priority. That was like, okay, it's I'm going to be number one. I'm going to figure out how to get the hell out of this. And I'm going to prioritize my own healing. And I had done all the therapy. I'd done all that. But I hadn't 
took in my own healing into my own hands. So that's what I did. I like dove in. It took me a decade. I did. I figured out what worked, what didn't work. I compiled it into my 10X rapid recovery method. And that's what I deliver with people. And a big part of that whole story was learning how to step into my feminine and allow my husband after many, many disastrous relationships, when I was with the man that I loved, I had to learn how to become feminine instead of this wounded, masculine, strong, independent woman that was working and operating from protection. Uh, I like I had had a shell around me that no one could penetrate to, okay, I have to learn how to let somebody in and learn how to allow someone to take care of me sometimes. That's awesome. hardest lesson ever. <laughs> yeah, no, I thank you, Lynn. I just want to honor the, the vulnerability and rawness with that. I really appreciate that share. There was a lot that came up with me um, as you were speaking that. So the first thing as you led with was um, how your tr self-trust went away. And that really resonated with me because as I was going through my divorce um, in 2014, my self-trust got shattered and I didn't feel, because I, I felt like I took 17 years of my life and created a lie is basically what happened. And so I was like, I can't, I don't know what I'm doing, obviously. So that was, so that was a story that I put in my head and ran with that. And then the other piece, um, I mean, you know, just to kind of speak a little bit more into that, when we question ourselves like that, you know, to a really, really deep core where we've just totally abdicated our authority, you know, because we have felt that we can't trust ourselves, like that puts us in a completely very vulnerable um, position and not in a vulnerable sense of like strength, you know, because vulnerability can absolutely be strength. It's a vulnerable, weak position, you know, because like now we have to, we, we don't trust ourselves. Like there's no, there's no worse place to be, I think. <laughs> so, exactly. Like I got to the point where ever, it seemed like everything I did was self-destructive. I was going from one job to another thinking that if I change companies, if I make more money, if I find the right boyfriend, if I live in the right city, if I do all these things outside of myself, I will find happiness. Yeah. And it was so destructive. It got to the point and, and some of your listeners might understand this when you're operating from like that, those wounds, especially wounded masculine. You don't show your emotions. And when you do, it's in a very unhealthy way. So I would like push all the shit down and then I would just like compile it. And then I would explode like a volcano and hopefully no one was around. But the unfortunate thing is when I was drinking at night, my husband would have to take it. And I'm going to be completely transparent. I'm surprised at times. I will say this to him. I'm surprised you stayed with me through all this. And his response is, I had my own shit going on. And I was like, I'm so surprised she stays with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, I like that just because it's, uh, that shows to me the, um, a, a, an idea of a container of like, even though it may not have been healthy, like it just this, at least understanding of like, there was like, you got your shit, I got my shit. You know what I mean? Like, the, I think that's one of the first things to like, of awareness, you know, that, that some couples and people just don't have of like, just recognizing that when that stuff comes up, when these expressions come out, you know, like, that's what it is. It's not us at our core at our true, true beings. We're just processing and like you know trying to like work through or navigate our shit and like there's just so much that we are not even aware of as we're navigating so like there's has to be this level of compassion you know like for the other of just and for ourselves too at the same time of just like we're all dealing with some form of wound or or multiple you know examples of it or manifestations of it and just having that space to allow ourselves to uh to heal and another thing too with the story is uh just focusing on the external right the material things and that's something that we're definitely modeled is just like the material success and like i loved how you said that you had all of this outside success but inside you were still like 
completely just shattered in a way like you were just like this i don't give a damn what the outside looks like it was shit on the inside you know (laughs) shit and i'm gonna be straight up like there were numerous times from my 20s all the way into my 30s where i was like what the fuck am i still doing here like Mm -hmm. is there even a point when i was younger i had um when I was younger, I had tried suicide. Mm-hmm. Uh, luckily, I was found. So that was wonderful for me. But when I dove into my self development, it was just me on my journey for a while. Mm-hmm. And when my husband decided to join me, we really dove into the masculine and feminine energy. It was something that I had been introduced to a little. And this is very early in. Uh, in our journey together. It was one of the first things that we did together in self-development as a couple. And it was so beautiful to be able to both come together and go, oh, this is where I'm operating in masculine. And, And for him to be able, me to give him permission to bring to my own attention when he saw that I was operating in masculine without judgment and without self-judgment to me and go, oh, that makes sense. You know, so easily people can be like, you're working in wounded masculine or whatever, right? But we we gave each other permission to go, hey, I think this is where you're operating from. Let's do a check-in or whatever. Because training myself to allow myself to feel the feelings, it was practice. And it was a practice in patience. It did not come like overnight. I had to really relearn how to cry, how to express anger healthy, get to that point where I live now in a state of calmness and meditation. Because after you let go of all that shit, there's nothing left to be mad about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love uh, I love a lot of things that was just said there too, because I think it's important um, you know, as, yeah, as you and I spoke about in your podcast, uh, when I, when you were interviewing me about, um, about this shared experience, right? Like you both chose to go in and learn more about like yourselves and on the flip side, the other, you know, and I think that's really, I think that's just so important. And because really what it comes down to is it's not about saying you're right and or i'm right and you're wrong it's nothing about that it it's strictly about awareness you you know you don't know what you don't know and it's just kind of like i mean i was thinking about this last night and this is kind of example it's like as you learn anything in school like you didn't know how to spell words until it came into your awareness you didn't know how to do simple math until it came into your awareness well not the same thing with relationships and like masculine and feminine energy and learning it's not about like it's not about an ego thing about like, oh, like I was, you know, too dumb to know this. It's like, no, we just are not taught. Okay. This stuff is not taught to us. It's not modeled to us. Like there's no other place. There's no other place to go. You have to seek it. And so I think it's a a very important to stress that, like, because, you know, from a masculine side, some men might kind of take an affront to it and be like, well, what do you mean? I don't know how to be a man. Or like, how do you, what do you mean? I'm not showing up right in my relationship or that kind of a thing. And it's like, it's not an attack on, on you. You're literally as men, we're just not modeled in our society, how to like truly show up or what it is like, like what the masculine really is or what on the flip side, what the hell the feminine is. Um, and I, the, the same is true with women. Like, you know, as far as that goes, like the actual, like what is the feminine energy, like really? Um, and like, why, like how, like on the flip side, like how is it, how is the man with our current model of things, how is the man going to respond to that? You know, I think maybe on the feminine side, you might be a little bit more touched with it, um, but still it's not modeled healthy in a healthy way. You know what I mean? Like we've just been taught in a very backward <laughs> way that creates these conflicts, you know, these, these inherent conflicts, regardless of how we intentionally go into a relationship. We all want the best, but because of our models and backgrounds and our wounds like it just normally ends up with unnecessary conflict yeah and we're so conditioned in the three third dimension 
-hmm. And now that we've moved into the age of Aquarius, this age of Aquarius is so different from any age before then, before this, because we're operating in the 5D now. Mm -hmm. And it's all about expression and higher levels of consciousness and intuition. And so even if you don't want to move into it, you're going to find that you're butting up against those energies. Mm -hmm. And it will be much easier to start learning how to evolve and ma maneuver around with them instead of fighting against them. And I'm seeing this in people that don't want to. No, I don't want to move into that. I don't want to think about that. 5D, what the fuck does that mean? And it's like, you don't need to know what it means yet. Just understand that you've been taught your world from the world, not from who you know, not from source, not from a higher dimension. You have separated yourself from your beautiful luminous body. Mm -hmm. I'm totally going woo here. <laughs> it's all right. It's quite all right. Because I mean, I think, you know, if, uh, I'm not sure like who I was going to be listening and talking about energies anyway, like it might be kind of a new concept for some of these listeners. Um, but I think yeah, if they allow themselves to just like feel into the words and just understand that like, yeah, it's, it's an energy, it's an expression, you know, it's an expression, like, and it, it, the simplest way to like, think about it is like, you can feel it when people talk, right? Like you can feel the energy behind the words. Okay. So like, if you just take it at that simplest form, like, you know, what energy is, you know, what love sounds like to you, you know, what hate sounds like to you, you know, what joking and fucking around sounds like to you. That's an energy. So like the masculine and feminine is literally no different. It has a, its own forms of expression. So yeah, like as far as then extrapolating that out like yeah there's these different dimensions right so like it's just <laughs> i'm all i'm all about the woo so yeah <laughs> i love that um so even though i was operating for many years from a wounded masculine i still obtain like for me finding that balance if I'm out of balance, I'm operating more in the masculine. So really trying to level that out. But what I found really successful, I work from home mm -hmm. and my husband's a chef. So we have different hours as well. And the home when we're both together and awake, if my door is shut in my office, that means I'm working. I am in masculine energy. I'm focused. I am right in there. Don't bother me. Mm -hmm. So he knows, okay, the door's locked. If the door's open, that is like, come on in. I'm, I may be working, but I'm so in my feminine energy. I'm just flowing. I'm having fun. I'm creating whatever. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to operate. If you're, if any of your listeners are home entrepreneurs, it's really important to understand what your feminine and masculine energy represent, uh, not represent what you're, when you step into them, what that looks like, how that radiates, what you need and what you desire. If I'm reading one, I'm dyslexic. So I really need to concentrate on it, but don't interrupt me. I'm reading. It's obvious that I'm reading, but if I'm on my phone reading, anybody can interrupt me because we hate cell phones. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just, so empowering to be able to go, you know what? I want to dress up. I want to look pretty. I want to flow. And if that means like, there'll be times when I'm in that feminine energy, isn't about dressing up and putting nails on or eyelashes. It's about like self-acceptance and flowing and just cr creating mess. Mm -hmm. It can be gardening. It can be painting. It can be what I, I love. Um, I love, I have a BFA, a Bachelor in Fine Art, and I have it in photography and in painting. Talk about a dichotomy between masculine and feminine energy, right? <laughs> and when I'm in painting, I love that in and of itself, painting is both masculine and feminine because one, you are very focused and you are very aware of what you're doing, but at the same time, it's pure emotion and you're like channeling and having whatever comes to you. Finding those places in your life where you are in absolute balance can shed so much light into those shadows and help you like embrace where can I have that in other aspects of my life? 
Yeah. I love the examples that you gave um, because there's so much, there's imagery there that I want to like bring into like concrete, like awareness for, for my listeners too. It's like, I loved it when you were like, when my door is closed, I'm in my office, I'm in my masculine, I am focused. And I think it's really important to understand that like, you know, that's, that is a masculine energy trait, like being focused, like men just want to go into the store, get their shit and get out. Right. Like some women want to go in and shop around and flow and like, look at shit. Right. That's an example that we, we've all ran into. Uh, and sometimes some women just want to go in and get shit and get out too. And they're in their masculine. And I get it. So it's not just, it's not just saying, well, uh, that's, that's what men do. No, that's masculine energy. And we all have masculine and feminine energy. So I'm not sexing, you know, it's not, I'm not gender rolling anything. And the other thing about like when the door is open and I'm in my flow, which means I could be interrupted and I can like do, I can go from one thing to the next. And like, I think that's a great, like concrete example of like exemplifying what these energies look like and how, and, and one example of how they're expressed. And then the other example you gave was with, um, with painting and photography, which was another great example of like, you're focused, which is a masculine attribute, but then like you're flowing with the creative part, which is the the feminine. So I think it's just really important since we're talking about these energies and it may be new to some people, like what do these things look like, you know, so that way they can start to connect with the idea of the energy and how they're expressed and all of that thing. Cause we're literally every moment and almost like, well, not almost, but in every moment, in, in everything that you do, this masculine and feminine energy exists in everything. It's um, everything. Yeah. <laughs> and since your audience is probably mostly men, I will share what feminine energy looks like in a woman. Mm-hmm. So it's very creative. And it's wanting to fly by the seat of our pants. It's wanting that compliment from your significant other that you're beautiful and flamboyant and that you, you know, you're so spontaneous and you're, you know, electric. It's very eclectic. It is one that just wants to express in every form. It can be let's just go to the beach and do whatever, go out for dinner or let's, you know, it, what else? It can be, it's just fly by the seat of her pants. Mm -hmm. It's don't judge me. Let's just do it. Mm -hmm. Don't stop and be logical about it. Let's just run. And for a lot of women, when we are building, if your significant other is an entrepreneur, when we're building business, We know that we need structure, but most of the time we're going to want to build it from how we feel and how we, what we want to do that day. I want to connect with my clients. I want to connect with what it's like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. The masculine energy is going to say, these are the five things that I have to do in business. The feminine energy is saying, what kind of spin can I make it? So it's going to be fun. We just want to like have fun all the time and, you know, not be tied down by social constraints. The masculine side of us is very, okay, I have to be organized. I have my to-do list. I need to make dinner when I'm in the dinner, when I'm in the kitchen cooking for practicality, don't bother me. When I'm in the kitchen on a Saturday afternoon, making gazpacho or whatever, drinking wine, come on in, the door's open. Yeah. Understanding those and emotions. Emotions do not signify masculine or feminine energy. But when you allow your partner or yourself to be able to express them, you can find balance much easier in your life. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think um, because that's emotion. I love the, I love the definition. Emotion is just energy and motion, you know? And so like, we've all, (laughs) we've all got that, you know what I mean? Like it's all, we're all energetic bodies. We're always in motion. So we've always got, feelings right we've all we're emotional beings and like yet the way that that comes out and and to be expressed or like how we how we approach those types of things and there was just so much imagery that came to me as you were speaking about um about these examples of like what the feminine expression looks like and again to kind of like bring it into some concrete examples is um 
like I like the I like the analogy that you that you did in your podcast about how the feminine energy is like the wave crashing onto the rock and the masculine energy is the rock. And I was working with a, a 21 year old um, man in late March and the imagery <clears throat> that I kind of gave him was about like, again, like the container where like just think of the feminine as like the ocean it's wild it's moving it could be calm it could be stormy and i was like the masculine is meant to be the world that like contains the ocean you know gives the boundary around the ocean allows the ocean to just be you know like and just be present with it uh and i think that's i think that's a good imagery as well because like the the feminine is is always changing it's like the weather it's like the sea it can be anything it could be extremely strong and like completely wild or it could be completely still and completely calm you know and so on the masculine side it's it's meant to just contain that type of energy not restrict it by any means not restrict it at all but to allow it to be exactly whatever it needs or wants to be i mean that's that's the freedom right there is is the masculine's the the part of the masculine energy is is to allow the absolute unfettered freedom of expression of the feminine and it creates this polarity and an attraction you know because the feminine wants that freedom and when they have that safety right that trust then the feminine feels very secure and it wants that you know they want to like they want that from the masculine and they they'll give themselves you know i think that's the other thing is that men might be like okay so i i do that if i show up that way like well, what do I get? And it's kind of like, well, if you create that space, like, trust me, you're going to get what you want because the feminine is totally going to respond to that. And like, she want, they'll want to give themselves to you because they've, you've shown up that way, you know? So, I mean, have you, have you, have you guys experienced that in, in your marriage? Like where, where there's yeah. that polarity? Yeah. Yes. You know, I think one of the most important aspects that we had to learn was, masculine feminine energy has nothing to do with your sex exactly and then finding that allowance within yourself of the feminine and masculine saying it's okay to allow myself that feminine energy and that flow and then find also it's that balance i'm gonna have this flow and it's gonna have the i i am my own container and i am my own ocean And then when you have that security within yourself, then you can allow that to be in other people. And so often you will find with your partners that it shifts as it needs to. So if I'm in the feminine, then he can easily mirror the masculine back to me. And it's continually flowing one way or the other. My God, it's not even like today he's going to be masculine and I'm going to be feminine energy. No, it's like for the, this five the minutes, I'm in, yeah, it's like this continual yeah, crazy evolution. But once you step into it and really know it, like once you are living in it, it just helps things flow so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think that's, that's an important distinction as well is that it's moment by moment. This isn't a day by day or week by week kind of a thing. It is literally moment by moment and it can shift. Like, so I know that um, in the podcast that I did, I kind of hit on it um, between me and my partner. So just to give Ben an example of this, because I know when you talk about, uh, at least when I've spoken to like um, men having feminine energy within themselves, they're kind of like, well, wait, what are you talking about? Like, so let me give you an example from my life that I just had with my partner, right? And then how this shifted in the moment to moment kind of a thing. So, um, you know, most of the time I'll show forth my masculine energy. I'm the masculine in our, in our partnership. However, there's, there was this time just recently where I was in my shit. I was feeling frustrated. I was, um, my partner said something and it triggered, uh, it brought up some frustration for me. I was feeling a little angry and my energy shifted, right? And I became more feminine because I had things that I needed to express. And so I started to express myself. Now, granted, in the moment, I didn't know I was doing this. Okay. So it was only after the fact that I could recognize this, but I shifted my energy and I needed to express myself. And so I started to do that. I started to like, you know, men are going to get angry. Okay. Right. So like every man can, can identify with being angry. When you express your anger, 
that's a feminine thing because you're expressing yourself like right that you that's the whole nature of the feminine is expression so there's a concrete example for you man like if you get pissed off and you say something and it doesn't matter to who you are now embodying a feminine energy like there's nothing wrong with that it's just how that energy works you're expressing yourself so my partner then had to take on the masculine and create that space for me and she just was very still with it she created that space for me to safely unfold and express myself and then she and once i was done she was able to call me into consciousness which was like to bring me back into my masculine and once she did that i i was able to see what i was expressing and how i expressed it and then also gain her perspective at the same time and it was this beautiful just beautiful exchange, you know, but that's just how that energy works and how it shows up. So I just wanted to call that out because I know for some men that I've spoken to, they're like, I don't know if I really have any feminine. And I'm like, you totally do. Everybody does. There's just no escaping it. We've all got it. Like, <laughs> We're human. We have it. Yeah. You know, that really brings up something curious that I think I'm going to dig into. Or maybe, you know, so I'm all into brain science. I'm a master hypnotist. And so I work a lot in theta. Mm -hmm. When we are in our emotions, we're in theta. And I'm wondering the relationship between alpha theta brainwaves and feminine energy, because that's our dream state. That's where we create. That's where we're like daydreaming. And, you know, our that's logical brain, you're like, is that where the masculine comes in? That's a fantastic uh, question. And uh, it, just intuitively speaking, it seems like that's totally right? legit. Absolutely. Yeah, it seems right? like that's totally and legit. And then what is delta then? If we have our masculine energy and then we have alpha, alpha theta as feminine energy, then what's delta? Delta is just off the chain tra multidimensional traveling. Yeah, so I would seems like that's like, where both would coexist without right, without, without boundary. Yeah. <laughs> without boundaries. I think awesome. that, that I mean it does intuitively it seems like that would be the case. For sure. You know, and the one thing I want to reiterate before we get off um is that the most valuable thing that you can do when embarking on this journey of finding that balance and working in the energies is to really first dive into healing yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's where people like you come in, Zach, where you can help men really dive into those wounded uh, subconscious memories and heal from them. Because the reality is your subconscious remembers everything. It has infinite memory. It remembers your birth. It remembers you being in the birth canal when your brain is, you know, right. Mm -hmm. I could go woo on that, but, but your physical memory, mm -hmm. your physical life here, your subconscious remembers everything. And then it just keeps going and attaching those belief systems and validating them over and over and over for decades. And so going back and really healing from those subconscious memories is step one. Yeah. And the thing is, you can't do that alone. You got to have somebody to do it with you. Right. You can't see your blind spots. I, yeah, I can't, I can't agree more on everything that you just said for sure. And I know like, you know, words, words like healing and that kind of stuff, like for some men could be like antagonistic or like put them off that kind of a thing. And I just want to say like, it's the same thing as awareness, really. It's just mm -hmm. all about awareness. You know, there's nothing wrong with becoming more aware. I mean, how many... I mean, as, as everybody knows, that's the only way that you learn, just things come into your awareness. So just get curious. It's just about asking questions and being open to receiving those answers and, and, just, and just allowing yourself to get curious about yourself to gain more awareness. There's, I mean, why not? Why not? What's right. the down, what is the downside? What do you have right. to Right, and I was just going to say, like, I, I'm used to talking to women, so I use those terms. They resonate more, but... Mm -hmm. The reality is, wouldn't you rather be happy and experiencing joy mm -hmm. and having a great relationship than living in stress, struggle, lack, pissed off? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, wounded masculine is fucking angry all the time. And here's how wounded masculine works. If somebody tells you you're angry, you're like, I'm not fucking angry. Mm -hmm. That's a red flag that you are (laughs) needing to get some balance. You need to like really become aware. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and yeah then one of the, my things too is that like it, if once you become more aware and you start working from this place of of, of balance and in and, and a better understanding of how these energies work you'll have less conflict in your relationships you'll be more desirable and you're going to have probably more frequent and better sex i mean it's a win 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 i mean let's just be serious let's just get down to like totally. what we want we, we all want more pleasure right so like why would you not do this? Like, just, just take some time and yeah, heal that stuff or become more aware and like, just live a better life, have more fun. I mean, that's really what it's about and have a deeper connection. Right. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, well, thank so, you, Lynn. Yeah, go sure. ahead. I was just going to say, so if uh, anyone wants to find me, they, yep. I have my own podcast. It's the cosmic Valkyrie podcast and it is the cosmic V A L Y R I E podcast awesome thank you for that is there anywhere else that we can find you or um no like i'm all, all over social but you can find me at my website the cosmic valkyrie.com gotcha perfect well thank you lynn appreciate you joining me today and being a guest and um yeah it was fascinating i loved it thank you so much the knockout punch for today is that it can't be overstated that the relationship with yourself is where it all begins I've only done four interviews so far, and this is my second one to be published, but in every single interview so far, and I anticipate into the future, the relationship with oneself is where it all begins. And then after that, can you then step into a relationship that's more healthy with someone else? As you heard Lynn say, she started off on her own, developing herself, and then With her partner, they grew together because they both chose to make a conscious decision around working with each other and recognizing each other's energies and working to heal themselves with each other, giving each other that mirror and allowing that space and giving each other permission to be themselves and to see themselves for who they really are. So if you're here and you're listening to this content, there's a reason I'm going to invite you to consider that something has compelled you to have this information presented to you. It's very likely that you're ready to receive it, and it's very likely that you're ready to start looking at things in a completely different way. Instead of blaming, instead of playing the victim, instead of pointing fingers, I imagine that you're probably ready to start thinking about how is your internal relationship with yourself being reflected and showing up in your relationship with pretty much everyone else in your life, and especially in an intimate partnership. So that's your knockout punch for today. Until next time, thank you. All right, that wraps up today's episode of The Real Zach Olinger. Thanks again for listening. If you happen to find this episode insightful or valuable, I invite you to pass it along to somebody else because chances are, if you found it valuable, they will too. If you're on Instagram, you can find me at The Real Zach Olinger. Until next time, everybody, thanks for listening.